All right, so there we go. Um, a very big welcome to everyone today and good morning from Scotland, which is strangely sunny today. Um, I think just to keep up the tradition with Spain. Um, I would like to welcome the Spanish uh, LNH Spain lead coordinator, um, Rima, who is here today, and also Belen from the Spanish branch. And then, of course, the biggest welcome to our three authors today, um, who will be talking to us about their book. So I'm going to try. Um, we've got with us Dr. Talaban, Dr. Uh, Lertola, and Dr. Fernandez. And they're going to talk to us about their book today uh, called Didactic Audiovisual Translation and Foreign Language Education. So each book reading group session is a little different. And today our authors will do a short presentation on their book. And afterwards, we can engage with them as um, the audience and ask questions. And um, they'll, they'll be happy to answer our questions as well. So I'm actually going to mute myself now. And then I will give the microphone, so to speak, to the authors so they can take the floor. Yeah. OK. So thank you very much for the invitation, and um, I'll we will just uh, do this together, the three of us. I will start the presentation, and then uh, we'll try to be short, <laughs> so that we can have more time as well, extra time for the discussion. Um, okay. Uh, so the book you've seen the book. Uh, I'd like to have it uh, showing the book, but he can show it now as well. <laughs> uh, well, there's something, okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, par partially in open access, so you could access to a couple of chapters and to the introduction, but I will explain that now. Um, it, was, uh, meant, it is meant to be a book uh, for anybody interested in applying audiovisual translation to language learning, so in, interested in didactic audiovisual translation. Teachers, researchers, scholars, students, anybody. It is meant to be easy to read and, and uh, well, uh, also it's meant to be used independently. The chapters can, can also be used independently, why the open access ones can be read without reading the rest of the book. So why this book? This is the first question uh, we asked ourselves. Uh, why this book was needed, uh, because we needed to um, to lay the foundations, to systematize, systematize the discipline, and also to pro provide guidelines for teachers and scholars and researchers interested in the digital translation, um, and especially uh, recommendations, because audiovisual didactic audiovisual translation is, as you'll see. A little bit today and if you have the chance to read the book when you read the book it's a big um, sea of possibilities could we could we could say so here we systematize like the the nucleus the sen i mean the, the basis of what we can do with didactic audiovisual translation and then from then from from, from that that point people students teachers researchers can work on their own way of dealing with didactic audiovisual translation. And we didn't have um, a previous handbook, a, a previous complete hand, handbook. We had a couple of books that were either partial because the first book was in Spanish and were all, only dealt with uh, subtitling for language learning, basically. Uh, it was called La Subtitulación en el Aprendizaje de Lenguas. And it, it was from uh, 2013, so a bit uh, outdated. And then there was another one which was more scholarly uh, um, directed or focused by Jennifer Lertola. Uh, Jennifer, can you remind us the, the title, which I don't know by heart? It was Audiovisual Translation in Language Learning, and it's actually open access. Okay, that one from 2019, it's very thorough in terms of the revision of all the possibilities and 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 ways in which didactic audiovisual translation can be used but it's more uh focused on literature review and no it's, it was not meant to be a handbook like this one and it was not totally updated after everything that has been done in the last years which has been much <laughs> with uh with uh, the la latest projects because this discipline that we can say it's a discipline now, didactic audiovisual translation has been growing like um, 
very fast, uh, especially the last five years. We we've seen lots of changes and and new ways of using. I mean, new ways of of using the the different ABT modes and also uh, how effect we've seen how effective and uh, now seriously and rigorously how effective this um, this didactic resource is. So uh, that was what we wanted to do. We wanted to describe the pedagogical applications of didactic or visual translation in a systematic way. Um, to carry out an updated literature review, but that was not not that was not our main objective. It was something we just inserted within the description of didactic AVT. Uh, and it was very important for us because this was done in, in this previous uh, handbook or, or book from uh, 2013. Um, we wanted to uh, lay the, the methodological basis that really, and, and Alberto will explain uh, later, uh, especially this chapter, that it's open access and, and, and deals with what's important, why didactic or visual translation works. And uh, theoretically and systematically explained, so that people can understand uh, all the all the value uh, of of the of this um, methodolog methodological methodological approach. Sorry, and then since it's a handbook, we wanted to help readers to make the most of the of that of of didactic AVT modes. So there are lots of recommendations, samples, evaluation rubrics, and and ways to make the most of of this uh, extraordinary didactic resource. Um, in the introduction is not open access, but it is open access because when you open, when you get to the to the publisher's website, you can have a look at the book and you read the introduction. And the introduction introduces AVT or division translation in a very general way and why this book was, uh, uh, we, we thought this book was important and what the reader will find in the book. And also it speaks about copyright. Uh, what, what, what copyright um, guidelines we follow to make use of short clips, which is something that people normally worry about when they want to um, put didactic ABT into practice. And we have five chapters that we'll mention uh, in a second, and then conclusions in which we try to open the sea of didactic AVT even farther, giving uh, hints and ideas of everything that still can, it ha hasn't been done yet and could be done and could be, uh, uh, could uh, imply great possibilities for students, teachers, and, and researchers. And, so uh, now I think it's time for Jennifer to speak about chapter one and then we'll move forward. Okay, thank you very much. Noah. And I take the chance to thank you all of you for being here and thank you very much to the organizer for having us. Thank you. It's a great opportunity. Um, so uh, as Noah was saying, I mean, the book, it's supposed to be a manual. So apart from uh, providing all the introduction and all um, the empirical information let's say uh, we also have uh, chapter one uh, where we actually um, talk about all the different types of um, audiovisual translation modalities that we can apply in foreign language learning and uh, um, we explain basically what has been done but that was not um, actually the aim of you know doing a very um, precise uh, review but just to give an idea of the work that has been done and how all the different um, ABT modalities can actually um enhance foreign language learning and um, i just would like to say that we mentioned well of course subtitling and all the different combination dubbing and uh, also uh, the different direction that we can use or the description voiceover and also free commentary which is actually a modality that's not very uh, common but we think it's very um, powerful in language learning and we'll talk about it um, uh, in a little bit but also uh, something that we want to um talk about was also teacher training because it, we think it's very important that teachers as actually uh, they can um, well it's what actually uh, said in some ex um, experimental studies they actually say that they would love to use on um, didactic or visual translation uh, provided that they actually have um, proper training so uh, that's uh, why we are talking about this also in particular I men pointing out that we need uh, to uh, provide more teacher training. Um, so I just would leave it to that for this chapter because we, I know we don't have too much time 
for the presentation and we want to give time to uh, actual questions. Thank you very much. Alberto starts. I think it's my turn. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you uh, very much to the organizers for having us, and especially to my co authors, to Noah Taraban and Jennifer Lertolab, for making this uh, possible. Um, they have uh, explained and they have set the basis very well, but I think they forgot to mention something which is very important. This is the best book ever, okay? That is clearly, uh, uh, that was clearly the intention. No, uh, the, the intention was to offer uh, the readers a handbook, as they have uh, explained uh, very well, uh, with hands-on and practical information on how to um, use didactic audiovisual translation as a um, pedagogical resource in primary, secondary and university education. So in chapter two, uh, which is open access, uh, we set the basis, the educational basis of didactic audiovisual translation in foreign language education. This has been previously done by, uh, by Noah Taliban. Um, in 2013, no, yeah, 2013. Uh, but we somehow felt that we needed to delve into the um, nuts and bolts uh, of um, of um, pedagogical and didactic strategies, uh, so that teachers and student teachers saw the connection of audiovisual translation, didactic audiovisual translation, with language education in general. So we talk about several uh, dimensions which are uh, fundamental in language teaching, in language education, which are, for example, affective factors, the affective dimension. We know how important uh, that is when learning and teaching a foreign, a second, um, a mother tongue first, second or third language. Uh, we, also pro we also talk about autonomous learning, cognitive development, that means higher order thinking skills and lower order thinking skills. If you are producing subtitles in the classroom, if you are dubbing a clip in the classroom, if you are working with voiceover and other modes of didactic or visual translation, you can engage students not only in basic um, mental activities, but also in advanced ones. I don't know in other contexts, uh, because there are several people here, but for example, in Spain for a while, uh, language classes have only addressed uh, lower, uh, lower other thinking skills. Do you have any brother? Yes, I do. Do you like football? No, I don't. That was all. I'm exaggerating, but only a little bit. Okay, so we needed to promote the fact that the students uh, engaged into advanced um, uh, mental uh, processes, taking into account or, or taking as a reference Bloom's uh, taxonomy. Obviously, a communicative approaches uh, prevail today. So uh, with didactic or the visual translation, you can effectively um, foster communication in the, in the language classroom, okay? Linguistic awareness and linguistic and intercultural competence can also be tackled by using didactic or the visual translation. This is obvious because you are using media in the classroom. You are using videos with which are embedded with uh, cultural references from anywhere, depends on obviously the, the clip, the video you choose. And um, as for the linguistic development, working with ba Jim, Jim Cumming, James Cummins' uh, classic dichotomy of basic interpersonal communicative skills and cognitive academic language proficiency, that means basic everyday English, French, Spanish, whatever, and academic language proficiency, which is the language you use to learn uh, for example, at university, students need to handle, students need to manage both codes, both types of registers, both types of language. It is something you can do by engaging into uh, didactic or the visual translation activities. Of course, we are going to be working with literacy, mediation, and digital competencies. Scaffolding, which is a must uh, when teaching languages, uh, you can also work with task or project-based learning, and you can also use didactic or visual translation in content and language integrated learning. That means when you teach subjects, uh, non-language subjects, for example, science, history, mechanics, uh, chemistry at university, and so on. In this setting, working with COIL's uh, four Cs is very important. That means 
you are going to be promoting culture, communication, cognition, and uh, which is the other one? Culture, communication, cognition, and uh, the other one. And content, of course. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so I history, chemistry. Answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, since you are going to be working with subtitling, dubbing, that means audiovisual translation, translanguaging, code switching is very important. For many years, we have heard that 100% in the foreign language is the mantra, the official dogma in language education, and it is. But when you are working with bilingual education, we don't want monolingual education. I'm talking about English now, I'm sorry. Uh, we want bilingual education. That means you have to learn vocabulary in Spanish and Italian, in English and German, etc. After setting the basis of educational, of educational, uh, after explaining which are the educational grounds uh, to use didactic audiovisual translation in language education, we present several examples, several models, which are, of course, um, flexible. They can be adapted to every particular situation, um, but models for primary, secondary, and university education. That is, we explain taking Noah Taraban's um, seminar model into account. We explain how can you uh, organize a lesson uh, where you introduce, where you work with subtitling, dubbing, etc. I think I have roughly explained um, the outline of the chapter, and then I give the floor to, I don't remember if it is Noah or, yeah, Noah Tarak. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so um, apart from that, this chapter, which is open access, as we were saying, also gives uh, sample lessons for different levels, primary, secondary, higher education. So it's very interesting having it as, um, um, well, open to everybody because of that, because you have the, the methodological basis, you have the prototypical uh, structure, recommended and adaptable to any <laughs> different context of a lesson plan using didactic visual translation and you have samples that you can also use adapt uh, uh, just um, change uh, to your context or reuse any any way you want so it's a very complete chapter that's why it's, we spent a bit more <laughs> time uh, trying to describe it. And I, I'm not going to go into chapters three, four, and five, but I'm going to explain that they are the, like the core of the, of the book because they, they really get into the different didactic AVT modes. We didn't uh, define that. We didn't define didactic or revision translation in the, at the beginning of the presentation, but I, I guess, and I hope everybody could follow us anyway. And I'm going to take this uh, opportunity to say that it's the use of audiovisual translation as a pedagogical resource in language education. So it's just having, sub, having students subtitling, dubbing, audio describing, that's the main task that they're doing within a more complete task, as we explain in, in the book, uh, to enhance integrated skills, integrated communicative skills, and other skills, as, as we also explain in the book, that are important in education and in life, right? So uh, these three chapters are, have more or less the same structure. I'm going to give the floor to Jennifer again <laughs> to go through them, okay? Thank you very much, Noah. So as uh, Noah was saying, we have um, other three chapters on the different AVT modes. And here, as you can see, we have uh, the two uh, figures. So this, uh, this is chapter three, and this is uh, devoted to didactic subtitling and didactic SDH. SDH uh, stands for subtitling for the deaf and hard of hearing. So basically, on the left hand side, uh, you can see the different um, uh, subtitling and SDH uh, modes. So uh, as you can see here, that that is subtitling, uh, we, have, uh, we have all the different uh, arrows. So we can have uh, intralingual subtitling, which means that the um, transfer is between the same language, in this case, the L2, so the language um, uh, learners are learning. And then we can have um, on the right, interlingual, which is basically a transfer uh, uh, between languages. So you can have uh, you can move from the second language to the L1, 
so the first language of the students, or um, the other way around. So it could be from the first language to the second language. And also, you can, you can have here uh, in the middle, you have the creative uh, option, which is really nice because it gives um, them the opportunity to actually be free and uh, decide, uh, for example, to write a completely different uh, script uh, compared to the original, and that could be really, really motivating. So uh, all these combination, of course, can be uh, scaffolded because you can start from an easy um, task to a more complex task. And you can see on the left hand side, we can start with keyword captions. So uh, learners, they can actually insert only the keyword, uh, you know, within the subtitles, or you can have also, um, for example, pre-spotted subtitling. So the subtitles are there, and they need just to I mean, the timing of the subtitles is there and you can just uh, type in uh, the subtitles. So that's quite easy. Otherwise, if you ask them to um, transcribe the full original and then do the spotting, so the timing, it's much more uh, difficult. But it's complex, but they can reach that level. Um, so having said that, uh, we can say that um, on the right hand side, you can see uh, the skill enhancement. So what can we actually promote and enhance through didactic subtitling, uh, also uh, subtitling in SDH? Uh, so, of course, we can um, talk about audiovisuals, uh, CAV, uh, reception. Uh, so, for example, listening. I mean, that's you know quite obvious. They can listen and they, they can type the words and do all the subtitling. Uh, but also something that is very important to us and also to the <laughs> uh, European uh, Commission, because we know from the framework of reference for languages, uh, mediation. It's a very important skill uh, they need to uh, develop. And also, of course, writing. So in this case, as you can see, we have um, reception, we have production, and also uh, mediation. So the, this would be the main uh, skills they can enhance. And I would ask Noah if you can um, move to the next chapter. Too fast. <laughs> yes. So thank you very much. Uh, just would like to uh, comment on this because um, chapter three, four, and five are the uh, well, mm, uh, let's say the heart of the manual in this sense because they can give really uh, the tools to actually implement or the technical digital translation in the classroom, uh, both autonomously because you know people, I mean learners they can work on their own. We've been doing that a lot, so it's really. Um, it really works, uh, but they are the same, they have the same structure. So you can see here we have the same uh, idea, I will mention it now, but something that is important to say, we um, usually define what the uh, ABT, the DAT mode is, um, and then we have seen, you know, the, all the combination, we can see the skin enhancement, and also we have um, sample of lesson plans, so you can actually see uh, how can, that can be implemented um, using different uh, phases and usually in a 60 minute um, classroom. And uh, uh, also rubrics, because we need to uh, assess the, the products and the lesson plan they're um, submitting. So you can have all the, um, the rubrics for the different modes and they can be easily, I promise, adapted to a different context. So uh, talking about, um, because we were in subtitling, now we move to revoicing, so to give a new audio to a video. In this sense, we have dubbing, and I think we we are all pretty used to dubbing because I now know that also in the UK, uh, but dubbing a lot of uh, foreign language uh, production. So it's nice to know that it's getting popular there as well. Um, so uh, we have dubbing and we have also voiceover that has been mentioned before. Usually voiceover is the voiceover that we listen in uh, some programs and documentaries. So it's really um, they're very powerful uh, ABT modes. So in this sense, if we look at the um, uh, left-hand side, we have the all the combination here as well. We can think about intralingual, we can have interlingual, and in this sense, the same from the first language to the second and vice versa, and we can have the creative. Um, also here, we can start, if before we could uh, give the keyword caption, in this case, to make it easier for them, at least to start with, we can ask them to uh, revoice only one character, so in this sense, you know, they can build up their confidence and and be um, well more confident in in doing it. And then we can get to the point where they actually um, uh, dub every every character. But also something that could uh, prove useful is to provide the original script, uh, so they can actually have it all instead of just listening, transcribing, then revoicing it. I mean, it, it's usually it's handy at le at least at the beginning. But then they can do that from. I mean, for scratches. And then um, 
talking about the um, skill announcement, of course, here as well, we have the three. Um, uh, so we have reception, in this case would we'll be listening, like uh, we had before. We have the mediation, of course, that's very important, and production. In this sense, we actually have both writing, if they need to transcribe, and also uh, speaking, if they have to, of course, revoice, either dubbing or voiceover. I'll just skip to the final chapter. Thank you, Noah. So, so can you see the arrow, <laughs> the moving one? Uh, so actually the animation, so you can actually uh, scan the QR code and you can get the chapter because it's in open access. Um, this is about audio description and free commentary. Audio description, um, well, it's getting popular as well, but basically is the um, uh, ABT mode when we have mm, um, characters talking and then we have, um, of course, moment of silence. In those moments of silence, there will be a voice, a quite objective, describing what can be seen um, in the screen. And that's actually a very challenging and motivating exercise for them because we usually ask them to be objective, but of course, being objective in a description is not really easy. And then we need to take into account of uh, uh, time constraint because it's just between people are talking, so they need to squeeze in all the information that they want to uh, express. Uh, free commentary, we uh, actually mentioned it before, it's, uh, a, we find it very, I mean, with a great potential in uh, language learning, because in this sense, as the word says, free commentary, it's a com um, commentary that it's free to them to actually add and omit some information. So we find it particularly uh, useful, especially in terms of inter interculturality, because they can either provide more information for the audience and omit something that probably is not needed to be explained. So it's very powerful. And also, uh, going back to what Alberto was saying, to actually use, um, you know, this uh, methodology in a different level of education, we think that free commentary is particularly um, um, suitable for primary and also infant education. So if we are talking about probably uh, five to six year old children. And in this sense, like uh, for the other revoicing uh, modes, uh, we can have scaffolded options, hmm, so we can make it easier for them. Uh, but in uh, a difference that we think it's very um, important, in this sense, it's actually intersemiotic, the transfer, because you have images and they need to uh, transfer them into words. So that's actually very nice. And also, of course, you have intralingual, so within, uh, sorry, uh, between the two languages and creative. And then if you look at the um, uh, announcement uh, of uh, different skills, of course, we have reception because they are listening. If there's an audio, perhaps there's no audio and it's just a silent video. We have mediation because they need to uh, make it accessible. And uh, also we have production because they need to write the script, especially in uh, audio description, they need to describe. But in free commentary, as we said, they can add uh, further information and also, of course, speaking. So that's that would be it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, we just, just a note on this chapter. We wanted to have one of these three chapters that are the, the main recommendation guidelines and they all follow the same structure. We wanted to have one of these open access as a reference. Um, and we decided to, to, to have this one in particular because didactic audio description and free commentary are the, we consider they are the most creative modes to start. And we, we've said already that creativity is one of the main assets of didactic artificial translation and also the, the one that motivates the most uh, that motivates students the most and also because they are the the ones that really are more into they they are able they're capable of enhancing um all skills in, a, in the most integrative way ever <laughs> because you really have to do everything you have to listen you have to write you have to speak you have to be creative so you enhance uh your lexical skills your grammar skills everything is there from the start in the same more or less in, in a balanced way so uh, and also they are the ones that have been researched more or less the less <laughs> so the least sorry so uh, i think that they should be we, we just decided that that was the chapter that needed to be there as a reference um i don't know if alberto before we speak about the platform or you uh because I think the conclusions are also important, the way in which we give ideas of other things that could be done. And maybe you can also speak about the platform. 
So, yeah, uh, so in the, in, the, in the final part of the book, in the last chapter, the conclusions, we wrap up and we present the most uh, relevant ideas we have been uh, consistently presenting throughout the uh, volume. And then we specifically um, work on three directions. First of all, we explain which are further research lines, which are further research avenues within didactic or the visual translation. As you know, as you probably know, it is an emerging field. It, it was an emerging field. Nowadays, I think it is. it has been, um, it is recognized as a, as a discipline and a specific academic field uh, on its own within audiovisual translation. So we explain uh, several projects and possibilities in terms of qualitative, quantitative research, uh, long-term projects, etc. Second, we um, put our fingers on further practice and specifically on teacher training, because we think, we believe that teacher training is probably the most important um, dimension to be approached within uh, audiovisual translation. Uh, we need teachers to put all these things into practice. So we have been also working with workshops, uh, hands-on, etc., with teachers of primary education, secondary education, colleagues at university, etc. That, that is a very important uh, dimension to be taken care of. And um, we also present uh, some uh, interesting information on quality certificates, the Tradilex, uh, the Tradilex platform, uh, etc. Uh, should we mention? Should we talk about uh, the platform, Noah? Or uh, if you want, or other, I mean, you've spoken the list, so that's why I was giving you. No, the it's, it's okay. But I'm thinking that perhaps we we can move directly to the uh, question. Yeah, you know, if, that, that, that would be the most interesting part, I think. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the idea for the platform was just to tell you that uh, everything that we've done in Tradilex, apart from setting the, well, Tradilex was a national project uh, from 2020 to 2023, that thanks to that project, we have the book. Uh, the book, it was Alberto, Jennifer and myself who wrote it, but of course, the work that led us to the book is there thanks to all our colleagues from the Tradit project, uh, from the Tradit group, uh, that worked within the Tradilex project. And the Tradilex project also gave uh, birth <laughs> to this platform, uh, which is open access, oh, sorry, it's online and free, so open access. <laughs> um, and there you have all these lesson plans, uh, not only the ones that appear in the book, but many more, and uh, divided into sequences, into didactic AVT modes, for self-learning, so uh, you have the student can just work on the platform on his or her own, just um, working and then self-assessing his or her work with the keys. Or you can also have a teacher assessing the student's work, creating a, a class uh, and telling the, the students in his or her, her class to access with a code so that the teacher can assess the student's work more personally, apart from the self uh, self study uh, option that the platform provides. But I mean, it's open for everybody. Uh, so we just invite you to just uh, get there and have a look and also give us any feedback you, you may want or, or need to to provide. A lot of people are using it already and and it's it's uh, it's been quite a success a success for now. So and we are happy to uh, being um, to make it or to see it grow because uh, it it is growing. It it is including more sequences and more uh, tasks on different aspects on gender on um, well. Uh, there is a French sequence, so we are adding new <laughs> languages and. Um, we're going to add a uh, literature focused also um, le a sequence, all different levels, etc. So it will hopefully be growing um, as uh, time goes by. And yeah, that was the, I think we don't have much to, to say, just give you our contact information in case you want to know more about the project, about the group, about us, about the authors. Uh, and our publications uh, that we have in ResearchGate and, and elsewhere. 
institutional, reposit institutional repositories, etc. We are quite active in, in Twitter, in X. So if you want to follow us in uh, in uh, through uh, social networks, you can also you're also more than invited to do so. And we will even create soon uh, enough, Jennifer. Um, uh, yeah, speak about that. <laughs> well, <basically, laughs> <I'm really> yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, we're just uh, saying that. Uh, well, of course, we are active, as Noah said, on X, but it, we think it's nice to receive an email sometimes. I mean, uh, we still use that as teachers and you know academics. So uh, we're going to set up a mailing list uh, so we can inform. Not, don't worry, we we won't be spamming you know too much, but just uh, a few emails now and again just to inform about new publications, events, and other um, well issue of interest you know for the people in I mean interested in audiovisual well didactic audiovisual translation. So if you are happy, I will send you the link. I mean maybe to Nadia. So if she might kindly share with the people who attend today and other who might be interested. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Noah. Yeah, and just a final uh, sentence here that it's in at the beginning of the book because we wanted to dedicate the book precisely to all of you, to all the teachers and students who through the years have made this possible, have made the book possible, the, the discipline, well, the, this field of study and, and, and um, this, this uh, training practice for, for teachers, this, um, all, all the happiness that we've seen in our students faces through the years and all through all the comments and all the their insistence to go on and keep providing this type of teaching um well we dedicate this book to every, to, all, to all these um wonderful people who who have um motivated us to to to, move, to go on and, and keep working in this in this direction without them we wouldn't be here today so thank you. And now I think it's time for questions. We, oh, we have this discount code <laughs> in case you want to use it for the book, if you want the complete book and not just the open access one. And we're open for questions. Thank you very much. So um, but just before we start with the questions, I'm actually quickly going to ask Rima, the lead coordinator of LNH Spain, to just say a few words. Um, so Rima, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Nada. And I'm very sorry I have my camera off because uh, today our kids are at school because of the weather warning. So it's a little bit of a mess at home. So sorry for that. Uh, yeah, just a few words. I would like to thank the authors for finding the time to present their invaluable handbook with lots of practical um, sample lessons, which actually every teacher needs, I believe. So. Um, and also, I would like to thank Belen, who is here, but she said her connection is really awful. So, uh, for arranging this meeting, because so, and of course, Nada for running this then. So, without, well, and everybody, of course, who has joined this session. So, hopefully, uh, we will join again and talk more about. Uh, other uh, fields of teaching and learning English. So thank you so much. I won't take your precious time. So maybe somebody has got a question, I believe. Thank you. Thanks, Rima. So actually, we do have Dr. Anani who's got her hand up just now. So um, I'm going to just give the microphone to you now. Um, Dr. Anani, if you just uh, unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh. No, you're still muted. I okay. okay. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi. We hear you. Doctor Nani from Ghana. Hello. Perfect. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Can you hear? We can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever we have discussed here, would there be notes or maybe PowerPoint for us to go through? Because I think from the initial stages, I was late. So I didn't hear what was discussed uh, from the beginning. That is uh, from 10 to 10.20. So if the, there's going to be maybe notes on that, I would be grateful. 
So I can answer the first part maybe for you. We are recording the session, so it will be available on YouTube oh, okay. for you to watch after. Um, if you oh, just follow okay. us on the LNA YouTube channel, it would be available. Um, oh, but okay. the authors have also provided their um, contact information at the end. So if you have something specific, you can also reach out to them. Thank you. Right. So grateful. So grateful. Thank you. Great. Bye. So if anyone else has a question, maybe a, well, not a suggestion, a comment that you would like to make, or if you want to type something in the chat, um, we'd be happy. Alina? Yes, Nadia, thank you. Um, I would like to thank the authors for presenting the book to us. It, it looks very interesting. And uh, I don't particularly have a question because during the talk, for example, Alberto somehow answered my question because I wanted to ask about the teacher training and how they handle teacher training when it comes to implementing didactic audiovisual translation, uh, because that uh, that is a very sore point when it comes to, um, let's say, trying to foster or implement a new method into teaching, for example, into teaching a foreign language, because usually, the teachers are reluctant to uh, do something new. Um, and also, I wanted to ask about extending the project to other languages. And Noah uh, spoke about um, uh, extending it to French. Uh, what I would like to say is, if you're interested in uh, doing similar things with Romanian, um, we can keep in touch through Elinet. I'm part of Elinet Romania. So if you would like to do anything, for example, comparative analysis, when it, which would involve somehow Romanian, uh, we are more than welcome to um, uh, participate in, in this collaboration because we also have a department of translation studies and we uh, work with uh, audiovisual translation and all all the other types of translation. So uh, we are happy to join. Uh, I do have one question just for the sake of asking a question, uh, maybe also to Alberto or uh, any of the other authors. Um, what advice uh, would you give educators who may be hesitant to implement uh, AVT, if I can use uh, an acronym in their classrooms. Thank you okay. very much, Alina, if, if I may. Well, first of all, uh, yes, we we have worked, um, we work very often with, with teachers because that is the, um, that is the basis to introduce any, any approach or method in language education. And we have worked with primary education, secondary education teachers, and also with, with uh, colleagues of ours. We have uh, delivered workshops, etc., because we need to uh, teach them how to uh, work with audiovisual translation. It is quite easy uh, to do it. You don't need to invest as a teacher uh, an incredible amount of time, not at all. We sometimes provided them with guidelines, a specific instructions on how to do it, and then we obviously uh, wrote the book. That is why the book is um, is for that. As for the other languages, one of the best things to me, one of the best things of audiovisual translation, of didactic audiovisual translation, is that it doesn't have to be in English, of course. You can use any other language. And when we mention other languages, we are not only referring to the big languages, Spanish, French, Italian, uh, and so on. Um, I have worked, for, for instance, with minority languages here in my region we have a minority language which is not even official as uh, catalan or, or basco or galician so you can do it with any language and of course i'm sure that noah will be um, more more than eager to extend this to romanian and to other uh, languages um as for the question itself the possible uh hesitants um we mentioned, and it is something we discussed, Jennifer Lertola, Noah Talaban, and myself, we discussed it before writing the book. We wanted to be, uh, well, we are researchers, so that's what, I, what, what we do. We wanted to, to identify possible limitations, okay? So, so we don't hide anything at all. We wanted to know what are the challenges, what are the difficulties. Normally for teachers, that, that they will be, that you need some time, you need to 
obviously prepare materials. That is why we wanted to give them materials through the Tradilex platform, through the Tradilex project. We have created lots of pitching units, materials, lesson plans, etc. But as with any type of language teaching method, language teaching approach, um, it might be time consuming. Uh, this is something you can overcome if you obviously um, rely on resources which are available for you. That is why we wanted to make it better for uh, all the teachers. It is not complicated, it is not difficult. We don't see it as a, a method itself. It is uh, didactic or the visual translation can be effectively integrated in other methods. Clear, um, communicative approaches, task-based learning, etc. And we just drink, if I, uh, if I may, from best practices in language education. We haven't invented the wheel. Uh, we have taken into account what we know that works, scaffolding, uh, motivation, etc. That is why it works. Uh, I don't know if I, I have explained myself, Noah, perhaps you and Jennifer want to say something else. A couple of things. Yeah, yeah. You explained yourself perfectly. Just um, teacher training, as Alberto said, we've done it for years, but the book is meant to um, somehow overcome the lack of teacher training when there will be a lack of teacher training, because it's meant for especially for implementation to help teachers implement and know what to do and provide samples to adapt to their own contexts and languages. And uh, so um, we hope teachers can can take advantage of this uh, tool. We've, <laughs> we've managed to, uh, to create and also give access partially <laughs> in a free way. <laughs> and also for other languages, also Alberto said something about uh, in the conclusions, we explain uh, how we uh, have established like a protocol to collaborate with us so that if you just know what is the standard for us and adapt your context uh, materials um, whatever you want to uh, work on didactic didactic or visual translation with to this protocol then it's great for us and for the platform and for everybody that will uh, take advantage of 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 your own um, uh, work, I mean, if you want, because we, 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 we just want this to be for everybody, to be open to, to everybody. And a good thing, taking the time consuming limitation <laughs> Alberto mentioned, uh, a good thing about following the plot protocol and also collaborate with us uh, and uh, taking part in the platform somehow or on this growing aspect of the platform I mentioned is that those teachers will also take advantage of the, the, the work that is there to save time in future courses. So you, you, you spend extra time creating the materials, but then year after year, your students and maybe your colleague students will be able to profit from, from those materials. Uh, that will be available in this platform, which has, uh, we didn't talk about the platform much, but you don't need to download videos, you don't need to download a particular subtitling editor, you don't need to download, so all the technical aspects are, you don't need to spend time on there, uh, on that, and your students don't have to spend time uh, downloading or or having technical issues when they were with didactic or visual translation. That was something that happened before when did, we didn't have the platform. So we will save time. So the, the time consuming limitation is kind of disappearing if we uh, follow or collaborate in, in this direction. I, I don't know if Jennifer wants to add something. Yes, thanks. No, I was actually reading the uh, the question in the in the chat if you can show the the platform so maybe you know if you want to go to the platform i just will just add a note so thank you very much alina for your question and for your interest of course uh, i think something that um i didn't mention uh, when talking about the three chapters the chapter three four and five when we actually talk about the uh, abt modes and how they can be applied there's there are also guidelines so you know even if you I mean, there are guidelines taken from the professional practice and adapted, you know, after years and piloting to the language classroom. So I think that's very useful for teachers 
and students alike, because of course, teacher, they might get used to that. And of course, we're not uh, expecting, you know, professional uh, outputs from the students, but something they can enjoy that is useful for them to learn and doesn't have to be perfect in terms of audiovisual translation. And something I would like to say, and I think, um, no, and Alberto will agree with me. I think we are, I mean, this was just a wonderful invitation from Elinet, and I think it was a first approach. So I think we can make easily <laughs> available if we want to do a, a follow up uh, and maybe focus on the platform and do a one hour perhaps a teacher training. So where we can show how to access, see the teacher side, because now Noah, she's going to show you, but probably, you know, we need more time so we can actually uh, see it in more detail. So just, you know, leaving the proposal in if the Elinet uh, group would like to consider it and perhaps invite people interested. So that's it. Thanks, Noah. Just a quick look at the platform. This is, for now, we have two languages, the platform in, in Spanish and in English. The registration is very fast. You just register your email, get a, an email confirmation, and you're there. Uh, so that would be the registration, but I'm going to access with my with my account. You can access as a student or as teacher. You will see different things when you access, and these are all the sequences. So you have uh, subtitling B1, dubbing B1, all the B1 and B2 uh, versions of uh, the, those ones. Those were the ones we worked on uh, in Tradilex during the project. And the, we have this new one on subtitling and gender, which is C1, the French one, and this new one I mentioned about literature and didactic audiovisual translation, which is also C1. And um, you get there any any in any of the sequences, you have the different uh, lesson plans that are in the sequence. Of course, the idea is to follow one, two, three, <laughs> to follow them in the, in the order they appear. And when you get uh, in one of them, you know, you'll always get a description, a general summary of what you will find there. And you get, uh, when you get in, you have the four blocks. So the warm up, the viewing, the ABT task, and the post ABT task. And I don't know if we have time for more, but um, let me just show you the teachers uh, if I know where it is. You see the teachers have um, uh, a room like a, with a coat. So the name of the, where you have all your students here, I have 69 students. I'm not going to open this because you will see the names of the students and we shouldn't because <laughs> we are recording. But when you get into the student, you have the rubric inserted. So you see the, the student's lesson plan and you can open the rubric to assess the subtitling, dubbing, voiceover, whatever that task uh, the student did, and also uh, an open observation box so that you can also assess if you want the writing, the speaking that was in the in the lesson plan. And also just one last thing about the Tradilex platform. If you get here, there is this about Tradilex and uh, we have uh, a guidebook for the platform. It's not updated with the new uh, sequences, but you can have an introduction to what didactic revision translation is, uh, to what uh, subtitling, didactic subtitling is, etc. And also, you have all the um, all the lesson plans plans that are in the platform. You have them here, so you don't need to get into the platform as a teacher. Okay, so uh, if you open this. You can see, for example, the ones for SDH B1. So you get there and you see all the all the lesson plans described in a general way with a general description. So that as a teacher, you don't get you don't need to get into the platform to see what you want your students to do. So it's a quick way of, of getting to know the platform from the inside. <laughs> or well, you know, in a way. Okay. Uh, I think I don't know if Alberta and Jennifer want to say anything about the platform or no, okay. it's okay. No, thank you very much. Yeah, um, so, um, oh, sorry, sorry Julia. No, no, just no? to say that I think we can meet the next time and talk more about the yeah. platform <laughs> whenever you want. This is perfect. Um, thank you so much from my side as well. I'm actually going to wrap it up here. In fact, let me stop this recording while we're all um, here.